So the Catalina Island Conservancy is interested in eradicating, exterminating, the mule deer that are currently on Catalina Island. Those mule deer are technically invasive, non-native. They never occurred on the island. They were put there by California Department of Fish and Wildlife and as such are classified as a game species and managed as such. For the first time in I don't know how long, the Catalina Island Humane Society and the hunting community are on the same page. Why extermination? Why eradication? Why the wanton waste of a resource if you decide to put sharpshooters in helicopters and gun them down to reduce the population to almost zero? Now look, I completely get the need for management of an invasive species that has no predators so that you can maximize, sustain the biodiversity of these very precious uh, ecosystems, these Channel Islands, Catalina Island being one of them. Totally get it. But the wholesale removal through the use of sharpshooters out of helicopters mm, seems a little extreme from my perspective. I think the extreme suggestion is being put forward because there hasn't been an example here in the United States where someone has said, hey, can we blend multiple interest groups together to get a win-win-win out of this? There may not be examples here in the US, but there are certainly examples in Australia and in New Zealand specifically, where they deal with invasive non-native deer and the management of the resource, as well as the compromise against biodiversity from a grazing perspective or browsing perspective. So the question you have to ask yourself is, is there a management protocol by which you can manage the quantity of animals, the quality of animals, and the biodiversity of the system. Is there such a management protocol in place somewhere in the world? And the answer is absolutely yes. The best example of that is with the Fjordland Wapiti Foundation in the very lowest part of the South Island of New Zealand, in which they are managing a red deer elk hybrid herd that was gifted to them by Theodore Roosevelt back in 1905. And what the Fjordland Wapiti Foundation has done is essentially arrested control away from the government to say, look, we know we have to manage our deer numbers because we have to protect biodiversity. We also very much value the trophy quality of animals because hunters want to come here, they want to spend money in our communities with our outfitters and, and they want to go and chase these animals in an area that really nobody wants to go into except hunters. And the end result is meat for people, a management of quantity for the government and biodiversity and a management of quality for hunters. Exactly what Catalina Island is looking for. So here's a suggestion from me, based on the experience that I have learned in looking at the Australian system, the New Zealand system, Seeker Foundation, specifically the Fjordland Wapiti Foundation, for how California Department of Fish and Wildlife could attack the mule deer on Catalina Island. So let's build a five year plan in which the goal is a sustainable mule deer herd that balances biodiversity objectives for the island. I use objectives very specifically because objectives need science and they need data. That is a critical component of this five year plan. So if I was in control, this is what I would do over the next five years. Number one, I would put in, if they're not already established, permanent, randomly stratified vegetation transects that can absolutely give you the data to show vegetation change in terms of species, number, presence, absence, the whole kit and caboodle, the data that you need to drive the purpose statement tied to biodiversity of vegetation. That's number one. So the second thing I would do is this. I would implement a 10% herd cull every year for the first three years. In that culling exercise, I would put a biologist slash hunter in the helicopter with the sharpshooter such that you are able to be selective intake of females and inferior genetics, inferior bucks so that you're doing two things. You're accomplishing two objectives at the same time. Number one, population control, and number two, increasing the trophy quality of animals on the island. Over those three years, you're gonna be gathering population survey estimates. You're gonna be gathering herd structure information. And after year three, you'll be able to determine whether or not a cull is needed in year four, year five, and subsequent years. The cull is necessary to put a good dent in a population reduction model. You have to have that right now so that we can balance the objectives of deer management as well as biodiversity. I would also try to put in place a mechanism by which those animals are able to be picked up. Happens all the time. It's super easy. 
hook them onto the bottom of the helicopter, take them to a central location, and that meat can then be utilized in food shelters and food pantries on the mainland. The third thing I would do is implement an immediate doe-only season. Allow hunters to come in, put a quota in place. I don't know what that quota is. Let California Department of Fish and Wildlife determine. Hunters come in, take one or two does. They use suppressed rifles to reduce the disturbance on the population. Those animals are utilized. The meat is utilized. And those hunters then get put into a lottery for a mule deer buck tag in the following year. That if the cull did what it did, gives you a greater opportunity at a trophy quality animal the following year and it gets better and better and better over time. Three very simple things that I would do that would be a win for the population management, a win for the trophy quality of that population, a win for biodiversity management, and a win to showcase how hunting and people who value animal rights can work together to maximize biodiversity on the landscape and the health of a certain deer herd that is isolated from predators and needs some sort of control. If you run the numbers in your brain in terms of what I suggested, it's probably a 30 to 40% reduction in population every year for the first three years that will yield significant changes in the vegetation biodiversity and allow you to use the science to then determine how you manage the population moving forward. This will create a science-based, hunter-involved, state agency-led wildlife management protocol that the US has never seen. It is actually the ultimate win, win, win. A win for biodiversity, a win for population health, a win for trophy quality, a win for the resource being utilized, and possibly a win for the food going to people that need it the most. I'm sure there's lots of things wrong with what I just suggested. It was very simplistic. I haven't thought through the details, but if anybody from California Department of Fish and Wildlife is listening and watching this, you have the opportunity here to absolutely do something revolutionary that then could serve as the gold star standard for other types of populations everywhere across the US. I cannot see a downfall in doing something like that.